This video is a very short review of how to make an annotated bibliography that you will need for your research project. The purpose of an annotated bibliography is to make it easier for researchers to keep track of what their sources are saying and doing so that they have less trouble having to review articles that they've previously read. It's a nice way to organize ideas and make them efficient and convenient for reference for yourself and in some cases for other researchers. So in this video we're going to look at an example of an annotated bibliography that I created for a project I did looking at book two of Edmund Spencer's Fairy Queen and in this project, this research paper that I was doing, um, I had to examine a chain of arguments from literary scholars going all the way back to C.S. Lewis who wrote a really influential chapter in one of his books about this part of the Fairy Queen and so we'll look at the sources I found and how I annotated them and how that process proved useful as I continued writing this particular paper. So when you're making your annotated bibliography, it's going to look a lot like any bibliography with your entries organized alphabetically by last name of author. For these projects, you're going to stick with that MLA format and you're going to use the appropriate citation. In this case, um, this represents a literary journal. And so you'll have all that information. To make it annotated, all you're going to do is add a brief explanation of what is in your source. So this source talks about certain ways that terms are used. I put that in here, basically capturing the main points that would come out of this article and especially highlighting things that were going to make sense for my particular project. There's not a hard and fast rule about exactly what has to be in your annotation or even how long it has to be. Generally a sentence or two would be probably your minimum. However, in some cases you're going to look for something longer. In this project there was a book chapter from an important book by C.S. Lewis. This chapter was a major part of the academic conversation about my topic um, in his book The Allegory of Love. And so my annotation is like close to two pages long because there's so much stuff that had to be covered. And as you can see others, just a couple sentences, all that was required. Another one here had it to be a little bit longer. So in this example you can see I made choices about how long my annotations needed to be based on the needs of my research. Again, the idea is that you don't want to end up with lots of sources and you can't remember what was important about each one so the annotated bibliography is useful for you and in a lot of situations if you are working in a field and you wanted to share resources and research information with other scholars this would also be a useful tool some people even publish annotated bibliographies on certain topics as a useful resource for other scholars. Hopefully this is helpful for you. I know uh, for many of you, you've done at least a little bit of this before. Some of you might be new. Uh, it's not a very difficult process. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. And really there's a lot of it where you, the more you do it, you kind of find out how to make it work for you. It was a discipline or a technique that I didn't find very useful at first when I first started doing it for uh, one of the classes I took. But as projects I did got more and more involved, I found myself turning to annotated bibliographies more and more just as a way not to get completely lost in my research. So in the case we looked at in this video, you know, no teacher or professor made me do that. I did it myself because I would have totally been overwhelmed without it. So hopefully this can be helpful for you too.